life, even when it's going good, is very hard. And uh, and that particular week had been very, very difficult for us. And then I knew that we had done the right thing because at the end of it, Emily turned to me and she said, those two hours made me forget everything we've gone through. And I said, yep, me too. So, so thank you. That, my friends, is what you have done for us in a nutshell, and we cannot thank you enough. We have uh, we have been trying to relive the moment of November twentieth, twenty twenty one, when we got to realize that dream of seeing Genesis uh, with my year old mm-hmm. daughter, and you guys were there in the second row, and you got a yeah. you got a finger point acknowledgement from Phil for your air yeah, drumming. Yeah, yeah. Yep, and uh, was that not an was that not an amazing evening? Yeah, that was. Yeah, that evening was pretty pretty fantastic. Mm-hmm. I I gotta be honest, I went into that show, you know, I knew I wanted to see it. Yeah. But I knew that Phil was sitting down and that right. he was having health problems and that they were gonna be pitching certain songs down and everything and. I, you know, I, personally, I'm not a, I, I'm not a big fan of seeing that when, you know, I went to see Billy Joel uh, a couple times later in his career and he was pitching songs down. It just, mm. it just doesn't sound the same, but it's still the guy doing it. So you still have to be like, oh, well, that's still awesome. Right. I'm still seeing Billy Joel do it. It just doesn't sound like the record anymore. Yeah, and, I understand. You know, the same thing, the same thing with Genesis too. It just didn't sound like the record anymore, but I didn't matter. It, it, you know, it, it, you think that, you know, you can, in hindsight, you can say that bugs you, but in the moment, it doesn't matter. Um, because you're seeing the band do the thing. Yeah. That's really the guys that did the thing on the record are doing it in front of you. And that's still awesome. That's and still he, an, an amazing, awesome feeling. And he's 70 years old. He doesn't have to do anything, but he's coming out there and he can still sing. And for my money... Uh, when when I heard him, you know, he sounded as good as he ever did. But I just love him, so that's just, just you know. But but you know, I, I I it it was it was a life defining moment that that show for me. Yeah, yeah, that was a that was a pretty big deal for all of us. Yeah. You know, the members of Gen- the members of Abigail to to be there and share that together. Yeah. Um, I am just. <laughs> Um, what kind of blew me away was, you know, everybody was on their feet for that show. You know, we looked behind us, and everybody behind us was just having a good old time. There were people in those in, in those front two rows that just like a couple times when they were going off and like rocking out. I looked at this couple in front of us, and they're on their phones, sitting down on their phone. Like, why are you even come to the show? Why are you here? Yeah. You know, I, don't. I don't wanna I don't wanna judge anybody else's time or whatever, but yeah. it's like why on earth would you spend that kind of money exactly. to sit right in the front row of a show like that and to, dial out when the band is at their peak to pay in the night, to, you know? To pay what I paid for our tickets up on the up on the risers took me I would say I had saved that money it was about a thousand dollars for four of us i think i would have saved that money for over a year and in a second it's gone mm-hmm. for two hours if if i'm gonna do that and and you're gonna be in the front row on your phone get up and go sit in my seats and let me and my little girl come yeah. down and sit in the front yeah man why are you like you know that just bottles yeah. my mind and i've yeah. seen shows like that and like, where i've been close and I yeah. wanted to stand up and have a good time. And everyone around me sitting down. I thought, why would you even pay for this show? And that, you must have that much disposable income. Yeah. And, and you can just, that you know, my seat alone, where I was sitting, was $1,200. Oh, my you know, God. We, no we got the VIP package, too. But, like, yeah. you know, um, the only the only reason that I was willing to do that was because I, I lost my mother in 2020. And uh-huh. she had left me some money. Yeah. She'd left, she she left me some some money, and I was able to do some of you know 
and it, do some of the things that I thought she'd want me to do. Right. You know, and, and that was one of them. And, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to see Genesis. I ain't sitting in the nose booth, man. Right. I'm going to sit right down there and shut. And so I told Matt, I was like, get me that most expensive ticket, dude. Like, yeah. Let's sit front row if we can. Yeah. And second row, second row, slightly left, slightly stage right of center was where we ended up sitting. And that was still perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I mean, it's. I could look into their eyes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they, they could look at us because that's where yeah. we were. That's how close we were. And you know? it, it's Genesis. They're in Charlotte. They've never played Charlotte. They'll never play Charlotte again. That was a one shot deal. Yeah, once in a lifetime. But to think sure. that, but to think that I had to scrape the bottom of the barrel to get to get to where we were up in you know the one hundreds, and those people, it's that's very insulting <laughs> to us. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. And I mean, like I said, you can't, you know, you, you don't want to judge somebody else's experience. That's right. To say. You know, I, 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 you know we're, we're in an age now where we're more conscious of mental health, we're more conscious of people's triggers, we're more conscious of how people, you know, how people like the, you know, the, the concept of aloofness may not be, they may not actually be being aloof. They, that might just be how they deal with being around people or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's a lot of that. And yeah. so I, you know, I want to be very conscious, uh, conscious about, uh, not, um, not judging somebody else's good time or how they choose to spend their time. That being said, come on, man. Really? <laughs> you're, you're in the front row at a Genesis concert. Stand up and represent. You yeah. think the band wants to see you guys sitting down on your phone while they're playing Sam show? Come really? On. Really? You know, come on. Really? That, uh, uh, man. Yeah. Uh, that, was a, that, that was quite an experience. Yeah. Seeing Genesis. Uh, with, well, man, with my bandmate that covered Genesis music. It was, yeah. just, it was very, very surreal and meta. And, and like you said, once in a lifetime, it was very, just amazing. Even, just amazing. And even though we didn't know each other, I'm glad we were there together. I'm glad that we have met now and we know each other. Yeah, before. we have a shared experience. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm glad that we have met now and know each other through Genesis Music because uh, you guys are just terrific, and I'm very grateful to all of you. For, oh, thank for, you very much. For what you, that, that kind of that kind of feedback makes it you know makes it worth it for us. Because, for what you because we're not Genesis. Mm-hmm. We know that you know we don't even dress like them. You know, right like now. that's not you know there are some there are a lot of. There are a lot of tribute bands out there that do the dress up and do, the, you know, musical box obviously is the most popular one. Right. And they dress in the period outfits and they cover entire shows and they've got the video and they've got the, you know, he's actually playing on an arp, you know, he's actually playing on a prophet, you know, whereas we're not that. We're more, we're, we're more paying homage to music. Right. That's why our name is Abacab, the music of Genesis. Right. And we're not we're not trying to be we're not we're not trying to dress up. But we're just playing music. But to sing Phil Collins, to sing Peter Gabriel is no easy I mean oh, no. it's it, it's, <laughs> no, it <is> not. it's, <laughs> it's very limited to what anybody can do. And I can't carry a tune in a bucket, but my dream of a lifetime is, and I would be sitting down, is to sing like Phil Collins. So how how do you, you know, I, I had to have a drum kit when I was five years old that I, could, I couldn't even hold the drumstick, but I had to have a drum kit so I could be like Phil, you know. And there's a, there's a picture of me in front of the, in front of the drum kit. I only could hold the stick with one hand, but I had it and I was fine, you know. Um Hell yeah. But um, uh, you know, um how does one I mean how how does one even tackle the vocals of Phil Collins and yet to do it as well as you do and to maintain, like, I would figure after a two-hour show, you couldn't even talk, but you were singing along with you, too. So, you know, how do you maintain uh, your your vocal ability? Well, honestly, it's, it's, it's more technique than it is, mm-hmm. than it is just, I can think, uh, you know, I, I mean, 
I, you know, I can obviously I can carry a tune, but I had to, you know, when I was younger, I used very poor technique. So, mm-hmm. you know, when I was younger and in band, um, I had a hard time making it through an entire show because of the technique that I was using to sing. I, you know, I kind of push my jaw up and, you know, stretch my throat out to hit those high notes. And that is the exact terrible wrong thing that mm-hmm. you should be doing. Um, when I got to college, you know, in college, one of the things that the, my vocal coach told me was whenever you're, when your notes go higher, your chin should come down and your breath support should come from your diaphragm and mm-hmm. not, you shouldn't be using your throat to make those noises. You should mm-hmm. be using your diaphragm to push the air over your cords so that your vocal cords are working effortlessly and all the control is coming from your diaphragm. And that's something that really stuck with me um, throughout my career. And it started to, it started to inform the way that I think, that I think. And then, you know, uh, uh, my singing just got better. Uh, there was also a guy, and I always have to attribute this to him. Um, there's a guy that worked for Hal at the Moon many years ago. Well, he actually still works for Hal at the Moon. Um, a guy named Joe Genuardi, who had a, uh, he worked at the Florida Hal at the Moon, so we didn't work together very often. But, um, but I've known him for, for decades. Um, there was a, uh, he had a, te- a technique, uh, instructional videos that he made called speech level singing, where uh, it's, a, it's a technique to get your, uh, to get your volume to be speech level, but still be singing and making, you know, and making notes and making them nice, you know, and it's not becoming about, not becoming so much about projection as it is about accuracy. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, he showed me a little of that. Like normally, you pay for this course, but he's my friend. We, you know, we hung out several times, so he showed me a couple things, and I've taken a few of those things into my tool set, I guess, as it were, um, on how to sing. And it, you know, it's one of those things that just it just promotes vocal, health, you know, and you know, and, I, and you know, behind the scenes, I try to drink a lot of like green tea with honey and lemon which is, you know, very nice and coats, uh, coats your throat a little bit and, and, you know, very soothing, um, cough drops, mentholiptus, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, uh, for another reason, I don't, I don't, uh, drink alcohol during my performances. I know it's a, you know, it's a common thread for musicians a lot of times to, you know, have drinks on stage or, you know, and I've worked with a ton of musicians that, you know, can't make it through the night without drinking, but, right. um, but there's so much damage one can do to a show and themselves drinking during a performance. Mm-hmm. It's just ridiculous. It's just silly to do that. And, you know, I like drinking as much as the next guy. I will, I'll throw them back and we can get polluted all night. That's fine. But if it's work time, it's work time. Mm-hmm. I can't be up there slugging beer and then, singing tonight, tonight, tonight. I just no. Because no, no, because no, you I, care I can't do that. Because you care about the art. You care about the show. You care about the mm-hmm. audience. You care well, about I'm yourself. Sure about my too. Right. <laughs> I gotta make sure, you know, that part of part of making sure that the product is good is making sure you sound good when you when you perform. It's just the same as, you know, me being able to sing those notes is just the same as, you know, Cliff playing his bass accurately or Patrick playing his keyboards accurately, or James playing his guitar accurately, or Matt playing the drums accurately. Like, we care about that stuff. We care about getting it right because, as any you know, as anybody who's ever met a Genesis fan, you play it wrong, they'll tell you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they'll let you know. And, and we've been let we've been let known uh, in the past. So mm-hmm. it's, it's one of those things that helps us strive to be better, you know, and, and just make sure that the product that we're putting out is solid enough that people think they're getting their money's worth when they come to see our show, you know? Mm-hmm. That's the most important thing to us. Well, Did you leave happy? You know, that's the that's ultimately the most important thing. And that is an understatement. Even more important than did we feel like we played well. Right. Did the audience leave happy? That yeah. is the most important thing. And that's an understatement for us. So you achieved that for sure. Um Yes, but you guys were already Genesis fans. You guys already bought in. I'm talking about did the 60 year old granny in the back in her lawn chair did she leave happy? Did she have a good time? You know, 
I knew right. y'all were going to have a good time. We just had to make sure we nailed it. Right. <laughs> but we... But we came, you know, uh, out of out of nowhere, and I thought, of all places that they're playing, they're playing at Saltville. And we drove an hour to to, to see the show, and and I think I would love to get them up here for the festivals that we have. We never have festivals this good. I mean, like the YouTube band was incredible, and we we never. I oh, mean, yeah, they killed. We, we have a free, the blues guy is a great tribute. We have a we have a a free summer festival here every year and and i've i've not seen acts of that caliber ever at 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 our shows so um hopefully we'll light a fire under um with the arts council and See, see what we can do because well, you tell your art council to reach out to our agent. Absolutely, his name is Joel Hanks. He works for Providence Music Group. Absolutely, I'll do that. And I know because we are a town of eight thousand people. You know, everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows that it was a big epic thing that we got to go to Genesis. So if with, with arts council get to Genesis tribute band, everybody's going to be saying, "Well, who is that Coolidge motion?" Because Genesis is up there. Yeah. So, but but that'll be fine. I'll take the rap for that. Um, but, <laughs> but we're coming to the end of our time here. But before we go, I want to touch a little bit on the other wonderful performers in your band. I was, sure. I was really uh, amazed uh, by the uh, guitar playing of uh, James. I did not get to meet oh, him. Oh, yeah. I did not get to meet him, but I but I loved his runs, and he seemed like a younger guy too. Is he about my age or younger than me? Even uh, he is, he is, I believe, still in his twenties. Oh uh, wow! He is definitely the youngest member of the band. Yeah, he's, oh, he's way he's, young. He's, he's just kind of a prodigy, man. He, he's, he, like he nails those parts so unbelievably, and then like you didn't get to hear. Uh, here us do for the fifth because we right. didn't do that at the show. I, I was but hoping that he would. Yes. Yeah. yeah, his rendition of Steve Hackett's guitar solo in that song is right off the album. Like it, it, he sounds, he sounds just like Hackett when he plays that, and it's so unbelievably wonderful. I mean, that's my favorite. Perfect is my personal favorite song of all time. Like even before I got oh, yeah. into and, and De- so, you know, and Daryl killing it on stage, you know, yeah. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. any Genesis fan always looks forward to that solo uh, oh, yeah. at that time. It's so iconic yeah. in a way that you know very few solos are. It's one of those very hummable solos, you know, and then. And James just, oh yeah, he just destroyed it. I mean, and James, uh, and James's work throughout our material is is unbelievable. But first and fifth is definitely my favorite James moment. Well, the fact that he's in his twenties and loves Genesis that, and is so talented that's just that's a recipe for success, as Bill said. Right. Funny thing, funny thing for for James, he wasn't a fan of the band before he joined us. Oh, but he now he is. He was like, you know. He said, I had no idea Genesis went that deep into Prague. I thought Genesis was just Invisible Touch. So. Of course. And we were like, eh, nope. <laughs> yeah. You know, then we started, he started learning things like The Knife off of, right. off of uh, A Trespass. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and the one, the, the piece of musical box that we do at the end of Lamb. And, and you know, he started doing that stuff. And then we started talking about, like, man, we should do stuff like Fountain of Domasis. And, you know, uh, we do Return of the Giant Ogwe is mm-hmm. one of the deeper cuts that we do, and he's, you know, he loves that stuff. He loves it. So he's like, you know, he is, he became a Genesis fan by listening to, or by being in our band. Fantastic. And by playing the stuff that we did. Yeah. And Jay and uh, Patrick with his keyboards, he had, he mm-hmm. even had the elephant for No Son of Mine, and he had the, yeah. you know, he, yes, Pat is very Pat's very very good about grabbing samples when he can yeah. and constructing samples when he can't. Yeah. Um, the, for Mama, for example, um, if you heard Mama, um, the beginning that uh, that that drum loop at the very beginning right. is by itself. 
right. you know, is, is, is by itself on the recording. Right. So he could isolate that drum lick and then copy and paste it into a, into a record, into some recording software or DAW. Um, he copied and pasted it and then just copied and pasted it for like 10 minutes. So it ran the length of the song. Well, there's a certain amount of, of, of oral accuracy that comes with being able to do that. Right. Same thing with In the Air Tonight also starts with a drum loop that doesn't have any music behind it. So it's easy for him to grab. That elephant noise, as you put it, from the beginning of No Sound of Mine, um, he grabbed that and then had to do some noise reduction for the other, you know, for the other um, uh, sounds that are in the recording when he plays that. Um, but he has that assigned to a key on his keyboard. So he can trigger that at will. Yeah. Um, but the way he... Something like tonight, tonight, tonight. Yeah. You, if you, the, you can't, um, you can't, you can't grab the drum loop from that song because the chords change behind it in the, like there's actually different notes that go in that sample. And so that kept us for a long time from doing it. Well, when Pat acquired the chord Kronos, which is an absolutely amazing board, mm -hmm. it's an amazing keyboard. That Kronos can do anything, I swear to God. But he got one. And so he spent he spent several weeks building uh, the, the Tonight, Tonight, Tonight patch note for note. He built that um, and built the, so the way we do it is exactly the way it is on the recording mm -hmm. because he built it, he built that patch to the exact measure specifications of the, of the original song. Now, the original song has a fade out on the record. So the ending that we do He's got the thing, he's got his patch timed out to stop before where the ending kicks in. So he doesn't have to stop it or anything. We just play it to that point. We counted how many times the, the ending passes through. And then we do the ending from, I think it's an ending from a, a, a live show that they did. And we just stole that ending. Yeah. That, and, bah, and, bah, 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 bah. That's, a, yeah. that's an ending that they did live. And so we just kind of appropriated that. And we do it at the end of the thing. But the fact that Patrick, it still amazes me. It, yeah. He built that from scratch, note for note, and can trigger it inside his keyboard and still play along with it as it's going. Amazing. You know, and it's, I, I just love it. He's just, Pat's kind of a musical genius, you know? And yeah. You know, and, and so it really comes out in his playing and his, his creativity in both building patches and then getting patches from other songs. And, and you know, it really does shine through. And, and, you know, we're really lucky to have uh, all the guys in the band, really. I mean, everybody, everybody in the band brings something unique to the table in their, in their skill set. Yeah. And him doing, uh, then we come to Matt, who does the Collins uh, drum fill and does them so oh, yeah. effortlessly, it's jaw-dropping. Now, Matt has been a Genesis fan since he was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been playing drums, he's been playing drums most of his life, and uh, he would sit around the drum kit and like figuring out Genesis songs, Rush songs. He gravitated towards drummers, towards mm -hmm. songs that had potent drummers. He's a huge Steve Gadd fan, uh, Jeff Beccaro, um, you know, big big fans of, of those of those old school drummers, Bernard Purdy, um, and so Matt kind of grew up where he would he would sit down and try to learn these intricate drum parts. And so when it came time to hire him into the band, and his audition piece was the fusion, the eleven eight fusion section from the middle, or sorry, the thirteen eight fusion section from Robbery Assault and Battery. And we went, oh yeah, you're in the band. You're, okay. You're, the, you're one of a handful of dudes that can play that part correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're, you're in the band. And not just every, you know, every time we go to learn a song, all of his licks are probably from either the, the studio recordings or the live recordings, which Matt is a huge bootleg fan, so he's got 
he's got a ton of live Genesis recordings. And a lot of his parts are amalgams from a lot of those live shows, different licks that Phil Collins put in and different things that Chester was doing during the live shows. You know, he's like, I think that's cool. I'm going to put that in here. And then mm-hmm. when he and I would have drum practice, he'd go, hey, I'm doing this thing right here. Do it with me. You know, so we would, you know, so we're playing, you know, like I said, it's an amalgam of studio version and live version stuff. And, and he's just, he's just great. And he's always spot on. Like, mm-hmm. you know, Matt is really, really good at uh, those intricate polyrhythms and time changes, you know, playing in 13, 8, 11, 8, 9, 8 for the end of Cover's Ready, you know, 7, 8 for uh, the stuff in, um, in the show. So he, he really is, he, he really steps up to the plate with, uh, with those, with those intricate time chances. He's very good at it. And then we come to Cliff, who is like the pulse of the band. He has, we were, we were, we were hackling over some of the facts, you know, and he, you right. know, you could tell it, he, but he's got it down and he's like the pulse of the band. He was the one that wanted to do the Genesis tribute band, right? Yes, yes. He he actually is the one that formed the band and put us all together. And um, he's the one on stage that is actually of of any it's like uh, you know taking myself out of the equation. He's actually one that is a multi instrumentalist because he's wow. playing he's playing bass guitar, but then he also plays guitar on stuff, and he has to maintain the bass pedal synthesizer that's on the floor. So. You know, he's, he's really got his hands full. He's a true you know, Rutherford, during, isn't during he? Yeah. Yeah. He, when he, you know, when he came to know what his role in the band was, it was the Rutherford role. Mm-hmm. It was, I play bass, I play guitar, I play bass pedal synth. You know, I'm going to sing some harmonies, which I, I don't know if, I don't know if there's any footage of Mike singing, uh, but, uh, you know, but he provides some harmonies and some stuff too. You know, um, well, I, I venture and, to say he probably did that a lot better than Mike did because I've heard some of his solo stuff. And, you know. Well, well, I think Cliff will be happy to hear that. Yeah, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you not heard, uh, look up "Halfway There" by Mike Mike Rutherford. Uh, oh, okay. That's a solo song that he did. Is he singing on it? Yes. Okay. And uh, you know, they, uh, there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason why Phil and Peter were the front man of Genesis. You know, right? Right. So, yeah. So yeah. I mean, all the members of Avocado, like if to pull this to pull this Herculean feat off, it really takes the skill the skill set of all five of them. Yes. Um, um, to really to really make it. To really make it what it is. Yes, it does. And the amount of lineup changes that we've had over the years, I think, has really, you know, obviously lineup changes are difficult to deal with because you make a rapport with certain people, and then, you know, for whatever reason, those people aren't in the band anymore, and you've got to find somebody else. And that's always there's always apprehension that gets, well, is the dynamic going to be the same? Are they going to be good? You know, so forth. Yeah. But I think, I think overall, the lineup changes that we've had have really worked in our favor, mm-hmm. you know, because, because we, you know, we've been able to fill those roles with, you know, having, having Matt on drums being the huge Genesis fan that he is and growing up playing this stuff and being like the Genesis band is a dream come true for him, you know? And so having him on our side, it really, it really lends a lot of credence to what we're doing because, you know, so much of what Genesis does is rooted in their drums, is rooted yeah. in Phil Collins' drumming. Yeah. And Tony Banks is playing, which is why it's so good that we got that in the band, too. Right. Who is such, such a prog rock fanatic. Right. That, that playing in strange time signatures and, and complex chord arrangements is are right. nothing for him. It's right up his alley. It's what he does. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I really think that, you know, that we've got we've got the right guys in the right places to be able to do this music and and uh and yeah i just love it i just i love being able to be in a genesis or genesis is one of my favorite bands anyway so being able to be in a band that where that's all we play 
we don't play anybody else's stuff. We play we play Genesis stuff. Mm-hmm. And we play Phil Collins stuff and Mike and the Mechanics stuff and you know, like we play that stuff and that's it. No, we don't take requests. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? That's a good feeling. That's yeah. well, that's perfect for us, uh and and know that that uh, we that uh, the fans really recognize your talent. They recognize what you must have had to go through, and they appreciate it. And I can't wait to see you guys again. I love all of you. Oh, thank yeah. you. For, thank you for all you've done for us. And and I oh. and I hope that we'll see you again soon. Well, thank you for you know being such big fans and keeping this stuff alive, man. Especially mm-hmm. now that the band's not touring anymore. You know, like all that's left of the tribute band now. Right. So, you know, to, to carry the torch as it were. Well, and uh, it takes fans, it takes people enjoying what what we're doing. Yeah. If, if, if nobody's enjoying what we're doing, what is even the point? What's the point? You know, you know Emily said something, my wife is very important, and I, and I agree with her. She said, you know, I would rather, because we got the show for free, and she said, I feel like I'm stealing something. She said, I would rather... <laughs> I would I would rather give these guys my money than to than to give it to the give it to the big guys because they don't need it. And I said I'm in total agreement with you because I would you know I would gladly pay to see a show like we saw in Saltville for free. Oh man, that's high grade. So well, the next time you see us, we'll probably have two drums. <laughs> so good. So when so please have your your agent remember us and. Keep you in Southwest Virginia once in a while, because you can count on the three of us being there and being right up front. Thank you. So, Thank you, man. So don't, don't awesome. so don't let your agent forget us. Oh and, no! Okay, no, sure. And and we we'll definitely be back. That was a fun. That was a fun time. Good. We'll definitely make sure we're back. I hope so, because we'll. I guarantee you, we'll be there, and uh, you know. Thank you so much for taking this much time to talk with me. You're for sure, man, for sure. Thank you so much, Pete. And God bless you and all the guys. Oh, you're welcome, man. Take care. Uh-huh. Bye-bye.